I'm Mike, the Pole Barn Guru, and today we're going to talk about truss spacing for post frame buildings. Now, before I was ever in the post frame or pole building industry, as one would like to call it, I was in the prefabricated roof truss business. I started off in 1977 as a Sawyer and then graduated into sales and management and ended up uh, owning and operating two prefabricated wood truss manufacturing facilities for 17 years. So I, I do have a little bit of experience from the manufacturing end of things as to how trusses are engineered and designed and fabricated and delivered. So most of our business in uh, those times was for stick frame construction, houses, commercial buildings, where predominantly trusses were placed every two feet. A uh, lot of that, the limitation of drywall to span on a ceiling, 5 8 inch drywall will only span two feet. And uh, most roof sheathing materials, whether it be plywood or oriented strand board, depending upon, of course, your snow load, will span two feet as well. So back in 1989, I was elected to the board of directors of the National Frame Builders Association, which is the trade organization for the post frame industry. And one of my fellow board members was from the Midwest, and he wanted to take a look at how we built buildings in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, at the time, I was a general contractor in the Spokane, Washington area. So my friend came out and we spent a day touring some of our buildings, both completed ones and ones that were under construction. And after taking a look at several of our buildings, his comment was, the inspectors in our area would never let a pole building be constructed with roof trusses placed every 12 feet. Well, in our case, our, our most common construction and most efficient was to have a pair of roof trusses placed every 12 feet directly bearing on the sidewall columns. Well, I, I hate to tell my friend this, but uh, almost three decades later, I, I have to beg to differ of his assessment because here at Hanson Buildings, we have buildings in all 50 states, a, a multitude of buildings in many of them, and all of them have roof trusses spaced on, on what my board member friend would describe as being widely spaced. Now, modern truss design, it, it's highly computerized. You enter in as, as a truss designer, the span of the truss, how far apart the trusses are going to be, uh, and the load conditions for snow loads and wind loads and wind exposure. And the engineering programs will design a truss that meets those design criteria. Now, the lumber and the steel plates, the trusses are constructed from, they have no mind of their own. So they have no idea how far apart you're going to place them. They are inanimate. Yet somewhere in the deep, dark reaches of history lies a theory that wood trusses must only be able to be spaced every two feet or maybe 48 inches. But what happens about eight or 10 or 12, 15? In fact, right now we've got a building going up in Chattanooga where the posts and the trusses are every 20 feet. The reality is there is no magic number in this. Now, a gentleman named D. Howard Doan is credited with being the innovator of the modern pole barn. And his agricultural service farm manager, Bernon Perkins, is credited with refining the evolution of the modern pole building from just a throw it together to being a long lasting structure. And it was Perkins who pioneered roof trusses being placed on edge. And with that design change, as opposed to purlins being laid flat, 
roof trusses could be placed 12 feet apart, which was the, the dimension that he happened to have picked. Well, that makes it possible for roofs to support the loads to which they would be subjected and be very efficient for material use. Now, I, I've had roof truss manufacturers try to convince me it's impossible to place wood trusses at spacings of over every four feet. The, what they try to uh, use as a defense is that their engineers won't allow us to. Well, the manufacturers of the steel roof truss plates, they're often referred to as gussets or gang nails, they provide the engineering design for prefabricated wood trusses. And their programs allow for trusses to be placed on any spacing that you want whether it's two foot or eight foot or 12 foot, 16, even 20 feet, and their engineers will place their engineer's seal on those drawings to verify that the materials being used, the size of the steel truss plates and the dimensions and grades of the lumber used to support that truss will be adequate. So the practicality, cost effectiveness, and ease of constructions of post frame buildings is based upon efficient use of the fewest amount of materials to do the most work within safe engineering design. And there are hundreds of thousands of post frame buildings all over the country with trusses that are spaced 12 feet apart or even more. So, and not just our buildings. I've only been personally involved in about 20,000 of these myself. Uh, we had some of this discussion recently in a, a social media group where a, a builder was talking about he felt it, it would be impossible for him to put screws through steel roofing and hit the inch and a half edge of a two by purlin, whether it be two by four, two by six, two by eight. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. Well, this builder doesn't pre-drill or pre-punch his roofs in any fashion. He just attempts to hit the purlins underneath the steel with a screw. Well, if you're using a truss spaced on two foot or four foot centers, and that two by four purlin laid flat, that gives a three and a half inch surface to hit. So it's a pretty big target. Um, I almost hate to venture to look down one of his roofs at his screw lines because I'm sure that they snake back and forth all the way down the roof. Uh, the advantage of pre-drilling roofs is that you are going to hit your purlin every time uh, if you try putting a screw through the steel and uh, you don't have a pre-drilled hole or a pre-punched hole for it, there's a chance that that screw could go in right next to a purlin and feel like it, it, it is resisting it, but you've actually missed it and you'll end up with what I would call a shiner or a potential roof leak. Now, those that are, are building their buildings with trusses on two or four foot centers are most typically putting headers or what they call truss carriers that run the length of the building. And uh, they're, I said they're just a header that put your, put your truss on top of that like a top plate would be in a stick frame construction situation. Well. The weak link of any construction is connections and how you attach things together. So when you use a system that involves columns, truss carriers, and trusses attached to them, you have a lot of connection points going as opposed to trusses that are mounted directly on top of columns where the truss can't slide down the column because you've got solid wood in the way, so your only connection is preventing uplift at that point. So it, it takes a lot of steps out of the system. Now, when you do use a widely spaced truss, whether it's 8 foot, 10, 12, 16, 20 foot on center, 
you have roof purlins that are going to be on edge that can either be run over the top of the trusses, which I personally don't necessarily care for that situation because you end up with a, a nailed connection, uh, trying to run a, a 60 penny nail through a two by four that's on edge or uh, two by six purlins that attach to a block over the top of the truss. Just lots of nailed parts without an engineered connection. Now our buildings are typically done with what they call a recessed purlin where the top of the roof purlin and the top of the interior roof trusses are at the same point and we use an engineered hanger to attach the, tr the truss to the purlins. Uh, in our case, they're manufactured by Simpson Strong Tie. Uh, there are other manufacturers of those as well. But now you have a, a engineered product that's been tested for load carrying ca capabilities. Now, if you are going to put a ceiling in between trusses that are spaced every 12 feet, you are going to have to A, make sure the trusses are designed to support the appropriate ceiling load, and then also you're going to have to have ceiling joists between those trusses to support your roof or your ceiling material of choice. Um, but it's still, there, there are fewer pieces. I've uh, run through a, a piece count between what we call a four and eight building, which is having trusses every four feet, posts every eight feet, and a building that would have a double truss every 12 feet, and it takes roughly 50% of the pieces to do a 12 foot on center building. Now granted, a lot of those pieces are going to be larger dimension, but you do have fewer pieces and fewer connections, and it's a fairly uh, quick system to put together. So to sum it all up, trusses can be on any spacing that they can be engineered for. Uh, there's not some magic limit to it, I uh, said so we do like the double truss system aligned directly with the columns for efficiency of materials, for structural strength in connections and design, and uh, we hope that uh, you will as well. Anyhow, that kind of wraps up our truss spacing uh, of the day. I hope that it's been informative and that you'll be back for future podcasts. Once again, I'm Mike the Pole Barn Guru, and have a great day.